There has been in the European Treaty for a while the possibility for countries to have a structured cooperation between them. But that possibility was never used. And for the first time, 23 countries have agreed uh, to have a structured cooperation uh, on matters of defense. And of course, when one looks at that decision, uh, one can see the glass half full or half empty. Uh, half empty because 23 countries, that's a lot of countries. Are they really going to agree on doing something bold? Maybe not. The choice of being very inclusive was made, but it has its downside. That's the glass half empty. The glass half full, it's, it's the first time it happens. It happens in a way because uh, the United Kingdom is leaving. And so the sense that everything would be blocked by the United Kingdom uh, in terms of defense, now that that is no more a possibility. And I think there's also a sense in Europe because of what's happening in the United States, uh, that if the Europeans don't get their act together, if they are not serious about their own defense, not to replace NATO, but to make sure that they have some uh, strategic autonomy, uh, if they're not serious, then they will be in serious trouble. I think this decision may change things. It's too early to say whether it will. It will depend on the leadership of uh, European uh, heads of states and prime ministers. Uh, they have now an instrument that they can use. It can be used in two different ways. It can be used to build up European capacities, which are badly missing. There is a very little capacity at the moment in Europe to project force, for instance. Uh, Europe is too close for comfort to a number of conflict zones, whether it's Africa and the Middle or the Middle East. And for a long time, Europe thought our model is enough of a security guarantee. All countries will want to imitate what we are doing. We are discovering that that kind of soft power is just not enough. That if you want to have influence on your neighborhood, if you want to help shape your neighborhood, sometimes hard power is necessary. And uh, this uh, PESCO decision allows for hard power to be built, to be developed. So I, I think down the road there will be uh, some real changes and I think Europe 10 years from now will be very different from the Europe we know today. The future will be shaped by events and by the reaction of leaders to events. With that uh, decision there is a possibility then to, to fill the glass uh, and I think that's what will, what will happen. Uh, and that's the way, to be honest, Europe has always progressed. Uh, you don't make big, bold decisions on paper in the abstract. And what happens is you have a crisis, you face that crisis. If you have an institutional framework that helps you come together on that crisis, then you make progress. Crisis Group uh, is monitoring a number of crises, in particular in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and also in the Middle East. Uh, and in many of those crises, sometimes also in terms of preventing uh, further crises, you need a quick deployment, uh, like the French did, for instance, in, in Mali, when Mali was uh, on the verge of uh, falling apart uh, with an extremist uh, movement. At the United Nations in particular, it's always very difficult to deploy quickly. I would think the Europeans would be ideally suited uh, for providing that kind of quick reaction force in existing peacekeeping mission. And then also in, in, in the case of an unfolding crisis, to have the quick projection of force that may sometimes be needed to, pre, to preempt uh, a massive deterioration that then will be much harder to, uh, to address.